Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we are going uh, way back in time, millions of years, to explore a discovery that is really shaking up our understanding of early humans. Yeah, this is a big one. We're talking about ancient tools found in Kenya and get this, they suggest that the whole story of technology might be a lot older and more complex than we thought. Way more complex. It's like rewriting the timeline of human evolution, right? It really is. A fascinating find that challenges a lot of our assumptions about what makes us human. Okay, so uh, you gave me this incredible article called Pasted Text, and I'm ready to get into it. Let's go. The article starts us off on the Homa Peninsula in Kenya. Right. Which is part of that famous East African Rift Valley. Oh, yeah, a place just overflowing with discoveries about our ancient ancestors. Yeah, like the cradle of humankind or something. Exactly. It really huh. is a treasure trove for paleoanthropologists. I mean, it's given us some of the most iconic finds, like the Lucy skeleton, you know, that human relative who lived over three million years ago. Oh, yeah. And now there's this site called Nyanga on this peninsula. Right, and archaeologist Tom Plummer and his team. They found something remarkable there a collection of incredibly sharp stone flakes that were used as knives. That's nice. And here's the kicker. They are over three million years old. No! These knives are some of the oldest tools ever found. So that pushes the timeline back even further than we thought. Significantly. So how were these knives even made? I mean, we were talking millions of years ago. Well, they used a technique called napping, which basically involves striking one stone against another to chip off these flakes with these super sharp edges. Oh, wow. Imagine, like, trying to make a knife out of stone. <laughs> I can't even imagine. It must have taken incredible skill and understanding of how the stone would break. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the article mentions that these knives were probably used for a lot of different things. I was going to ask about that. Like cutting meat off prey, mm -hmm. peeling plants, and even tenderizing meat. Wow, that's amazing. So these tools, along with the stones used for pounding, they're known as the Oldowan Toolkit. Okay. Old one toolkit. And as the article points out, this toolkit might just be the most important technological innovation in human history. Okay, so we're talking about knives and rocks here. I still don't understand why was that so revolutionary? It's all about access. This toolkit really allowed early humans to get to new food sources, which led to better nutrition. And that probably led to stronger bodies yeah. and probably even bigger brains. Interesting. But wait a minute. Yeah. The article mentioned an even older tool found in Kenya that didn't seem to catch on. You're right. There was. So why was the Oldowan Toolkit so different? Well, that's the thing. It really highlights the impact of the Oldowan Toolkit. Right. While these other tools may have existed, the Oldowan Toolkit was so successful that it stuck around and it spread and really shaped the way that humans interacted with the world for a very long time. So they hit on something that worked really well. Yeah. And they stuck with it. Exactly. Okay, so now for the really juicy part of this article. Okay. Alongside these tools, yeah. the team found something really surprising. Like what? A tooth from a paranthropus. Now, is a paranthropus a direct human ancestor? You got it. Paranthropus is an early hominin, okay. but it's a different branch of the family tree. Ah, uh, okay. So not directly related to us. Right. But still. And this discovery, it really throws a wrench into traditional ideas about the origins of tool making. Yeah. It suggests that maybe, just maybe, our human ancestors weren't the only ones using tools millions of years ago. Whoa! Right. This is like discovering a whole hidden branch of your family tree. I know. It really makes you rethink how we became human. It does. It challenges this idea that humans were always the brilliant inventors, the ones who came up with everything first. Maybe we weren't the only ones with these bright ideas. Maybe we learned from others, borrowed their tricks, right. and built upon their knowledge. Which we weren't as special as we thought. Yeah, it paints a much more complex picture of how technology and culture evolved. So to understand this discovery better, the article brings in Rick Potts. The director of the Smithsonian's Human Origins Program. Yeah, and he says something that really stuck with me. What's that? He says, we are the last biped standing. What does that even mean in this context? It's a powerful statement that really reminds us that while humans are the only hominin species left, Right. There were countless others that walked this earth, yeah. each with their own ways of life. Oh, wow. All of those lineages, all those evolutionary experiments, mm -hmm. they've gone extinct. Mm -hmm. It makes you realize that our own journey, our own survival, is something quite remarkable. It really puts things in perspective. It does. It's like we're just one branch 
on this huge tree of life, and we just happen to be the one that's still here. Right, exactly. But let's talk about how these discoveries even come to light. The article spends a lot of time describing these archaeological digs. Oh, yeah. And they're not always exciting. Yeah, it's a site of archaeology that people don't often see. It's not all Indiana Jones out there. No, I guess not. It's actually incredibly painstaking work. Oh, yeah, I bet. It requires a lot of patience, a keen eye, and an unwavering commitment to the scientific process. So it's not about just rushing to find the most impressive artifacts. No. It's about carefully uncovering every piece of the puzzle. Even the tiny fragments that might seem insignificant at first. Yeah. They're all important. So the article brings in Blasto and Yango. Oh, yeah. A renowned archaeologist. Who played a key role in discovering the Turkana boy. Right. The most complete early hominin skeleton. Ever found. Wow. And it took him and his team four or five years. Four or five years. To excavate that entire skeleton. I know. Onyango's work is a testament to the dedication of these scientists. Wow. I can't even imagine. It can take years to fully excavate a site, you know, carefully brushing away dirt and sediment to reveal these ancient treasures. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just about finding the bones or tools. It's about understanding their context. Right. Piecing together the story of the past. Like a big puzzle. Exactly. Speaking of meticulous work. Yeah. The article mentions another archaeologist. Oh, right. Rose Nyabok. Who describes having to make decisions about what to collect and what to leave behind. I mean, yeah, it's a tough job. She talks about leaving behind tiny bone fragments that don't have paleontological meaning. Oh, wow. It highlights this really careful selection process involved in these digs. Every piece of evidence must be carefully evaluated to make sure it contributes to the scientific understanding of the site. So it's like trying to put together this giant ancient jigsaw puzzle. That's a good way to put it. And they're trying to make sure that each piece fits perfectly. Right. But how do they even know how old these sites are? I mean, dating something that's millions of years old I know. must be incredibly difficult. You're right. Dating these ancient sites is one of the biggest challenges in archaeology. Like, in this case, the site is too old for carbon dating. Yeah, right. And the volcanic ash, which has ironically helped preserve the artifacts... Oh, wow. It interferes with other dating methods. So how do they do it? It's a real scientific puzzle that requires cutting-edge technology and a lot of persistence. And speaking of persistence, the article talks about Rick Potts again. Yeah, he's amazing. And his uh, almost 40 years of research at this one site. That's dedication. Do you believe that the site was almost abandoned? Because of misleading findings from previous research. Wow, that is incredible. It's remarkable. Potts' dedication is truly inspiring. It highlights the importance of believing in the potential of a site and continuing to search for answers even when you're faced with setbacks. And thankfully, his persistence caved off. It did. So how were they able to date this site? Well, new technologies have emerged that have allowed researchers to more accurately date the site and refine our understanding of human evolution. Oh, cool. You know, these technologies are constantly being developed and refined, giving us a clearer picture of the past. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that the timeline of tool making just got a whole lot longer. We're not talking about a few hundred thousand years here. Right. We're talking about pushing the date back potentially millions of years to over six million years ago. Whoa. So much older. Yeah, this discovery completely changes our understanding of the pace and complexity of early human technological development. Okay. It suggests a much longer, richer, and potentially more diverse story than we ever imagined. So it's like finding out that your family history goes back way further than you thought. Exactly. With all these branches that you never knew existed. Exactly. And each of those branches holds a story waiting to be uncovered. Wow. That is incredible. That's the beauty of archaeology and paleoanthropology. It's a constant process of discovery, of revising our understanding of the past. And ultimately of ourselves. Right. So we've got this discovery pushing the timeline of tool making back millions of years. But what I find even more mind-blowing is that our human ancestors might not have been the only ones using tools. Yeah, I know. It's like a total paradigm shift, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This whole discovery challenges this idea of human exceptionalism. Yeah. You know, that we were always at the forefront of innovation. It makes you wonder if other hominins were using tools. Yeah. What else were they capable of? What other skills or knowledge might they have had? Exactly. It raises so many questions about the nature of intelligence and yeah. innovation. Like, were these skills independently developed 
by different hominin lineages? I don't know. Was there some kind of interaction or exchange of knowledge between them? That's crazy to think about. It's like a whole lost world yeah. of ancient cultures and technologies yeah. that we're just beginning to glimpse. And it's a reminder that our understanding of the past is always evolving, you know? New discoveries can completely change our perspective and force us to rewrite the narrative of human evolution. The article also touches on something I've always found fascinating. What's that? The tools themselves. Yeah. We're not talking about fancy gadgets. No. Just simple stone flakes and rocks. No. Right. But those simple tools had such a profound impact on early hominin life. It really is a testament to ingenuity, isn't it? I mean, these early hominins didn't have access to the materials and technologies that we have today. Right. Yet they were able to create these tools right. that help them survive yeah. and thrive in challenging environments. So resourceful. They're totally. It makes you appreciate the resourcefulness mm. and adaptability of our ancestors. Yeah. They were able to solve problems and innovate right. using only what was available to them. That's incredible. It is. It's amazing to think that something as simple as a sharp stone flake could have played such a role yeah. in shaping human history. Absolutely. It highlights this interconnectedness of technology, yeah. culture, right. and evolution. I mean, these early tools weren't just objects. They were extensions of the hominin mind, like a reflection of their growing cognitive abilities right. and their capacity for problem solving. It's like the tools themselves are a window into the minds of our ancestors. Exactly. They tell a story of innovation, adaptation, and this ever-evolving relationship mm. between humans and their environment. And that story is far from over. Every new discovery adds another piece to the puzzle. Right. Deepening our understanding of the past and shedding light on our own place in this grand scheme of things. So to wrap things up, what are the key takeaways from this incredible discovery? Okay. So first, it pushes back the timeline of tool making. Mm -hmm. suggesting that this really crucial skill emerged millions of years earlier than we thought. Okay. Second, it challenges this notion that tool making was a uniquely human trait. Yeah. Raising the possibility that other hominins were also capable of innovation and technological advancement. Right. And finally, it underscores the importance of continued research and exploration in paleoanthropology. It's a reminder that we still don't know everything about our own origins, right? So much. And that every new discovery can rewrite the story of human evolution. And for those of you listening who might be wondering, why should I care about a bunch of old rocks and bones? A good question. Here's why. Why? This isn't just about the past. This is about understanding ourselves, right. where we came from, and what makes us human. Exactly. These discoveries can help us understand the roots of human ingenuity, adaptability, and our capacity for innovation. You know, they provide insights into the deep history of technology and how it has shaped our species. I've learned a lot today. Me too. I'm walking away with a whole new perspective on our ancient ancestors mm -hmm. and this long and winding road that led to us. And who knows what other incredible discoveries are out there waiting for us. The field of paleoanthropology is constantly evolving, and with new technologies and research methods, we're likely to uncover even more secrets about our past. Oh, yeah. Further enriching our understanding of the human journey. It's amazing to think about this whole journey that these discoveries have taken us on, you know, from those really sharp stone flakes <laughs> to the realization that tool making might be so much older than we imagined. Way older. And more widespread. Yeah, it really does expand our view of early human history. It's like zooming out on a map. Right. And seeing all these connections and possibilities. Exactly. I mean, we're starting to understand that the story of human evolution is much more intricate and nuanced than we believed. And this discovery in Kenya yeah. is just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Absolutely. Every new archaeological find, every fossil uncovered, it just adds another layer to our understanding of the past. Right. It's a constantly evolving picture, and with new technologies and research methods, we're able to see that picture with increasing clarity. This deep dive has really highlighted how much we can learn from the past. Millions of years. Millions of years. But I think it also raises some interesting questions about the future. How so? Well... If our ancestors learned and adapted from other hominin species, right. what does that tell us about our own capacity for learning and innovation? Good question. Are we still evolving in ways that we don't even realize? It really makes you wonder. It makes that. you wonder what future archaeologists will find, right? Yeah. Millions of years from now, what will they think about our tools? I know about our technologies. It's a fascinating thought experiment, like imagining how 
our own time will be viewed through the lens of, you know, deep time. Yeah. Will they see our technological advancements as triumphs of ingenuity? Right. Or will they see them as signs of something else? It's hard to say. Will they be able to even piece together the complexities of our cultures and our societies? That's a good question. Yeah. It's a reminder that we're just one chapter uh -huh. in a very long story. Yeah. A story that is still being written. And as we continue to explore the past, yeah. we're also shaping the future. And that's kind of the beauty of it all, right? I think so. We're part of this ongoing narrative of discovery and evolution. And as we learn more about where we come from, yeah. we gain a deeper understanding of who we are and where we might be headed. That's true. So as we wrap up this deep dive, we want to leave you with a final question to think about. Okay, shoot. We've learned that tool making, yeah. this seemingly defining human characteristic, mm -hmm. might not be so unique after all. Right. If we inherited this ability from other hominins, yeah. If we build upon their knowledge, right. does that make us any less remarkable? Hmm. Does it diminish our achievements? That's a good question. Or does it tell a more profound story yeah. of continuity, of innovation passed down through generations? I think it tells a story of continuity. You know, perhaps our greatest strength as a species lies not in claiming sole ownership of innovation, but in our ability to learn, right. adapt, right. and build upon the knowledge and achievements of those who came before us. I like that. Yeah, someone to think about. Food for thought. <laughs> and that wraps up our deep dive oh, yeah. into this incredible discovery. That's a good one. Until next time. <laughs> Later. Keep exploring. Keep questioning.